We're very pleased to welcome Rajen Kilishand as our commencement speaker. After completing his undergraduate degree in India, Mr. Kilichand earned his MBA from Boston University School of Management. Following his graduation, he returned to India to work at the Dodsal Group, originally a trading company co-founded in 1948 by a small group of investors, including members of his family. Today, Mr. Kilichand is chair and president of the Dodsal Group, a Dubai-based, highly diversified multinational company that operates in countries around the world with more than 25,000 employees. Dodsal is one of the leading energy and infrastructure development companies in the world. Over the years, Mr. Kilichand has made extraordinary personal philanthropic commitments to support initiatives that span healthcare, vocational training and education, libraries, teacher training institutions, and cultural programs. He has been especially generous to Boston University. Through gifts totaling $35 million, he has endowed the Arawind and Shandan Nanandlal Kilachand Honors College and Prof Professorship, and he has supported the establishment of Kilachand Hall as home of the Honors College. Mr. Kilichand is a member of the Boston University Board of Trustees, and he will receive a Doctor of Humane Letters at the university-wide commencement this Sunday. Please join in a warm welcome for Mr. Rajen Kilichand. Thank you, uh, Dean Freeman, the leaders of Boston University, families who are present here today, and trustees, and of course, most important, all of you who are graduating in the, from your master's program. Um, you know, standing here today, which uh, was not even in my wildest dreams that I would be here on a day like this, uh, I have to go back to uh, uh, memory lane to 1974, January, when uh, I had finished my graduation uh, in the master's program in December of uh, 1973, stayed on for a month longer, and on the 11th of January, I was in a hell of a rush to get back home, which was Bombay, India, for one simple reason. We have a kite flying festival every year on the 14th of January, and um, I believe one of the things that I'm extremely good at is flying kites. So I found all the various uh, flight connections and landed there on the 13th, expecting um, a large celebration. And of course, I was promptly told that this is not gonna happen, and we are giving you two days, the family members, to get some rest and then um, to report uh, two days later to the head office where all my uh, father, late father and his late brothers would um, uh, tell me what my next uh, 70 years are gonna be like and what they're expecting. So like a dutiful son from Asia, I went there and all of them were in the room and um, we had um, the, a elderly gentleman who was the fourth generation his forefathers were with us every generation, and he was the family accountant, which in our tradition was the most important person, and he was promptly uh, kept there, and he was promptly uh, asked to teach me the fundamentals of arithmetic in business. So I was quite flabbergasted, but nevertheless, I stood there, and um, he said, um, Chota Set, which in our language translated means small boss. And he said, look, uh, in another 10, 12 years, you'll have to select a replacement to me. So let me just tell you uh, what is the type of person you need. He said, when you interview them, and if uh, all those who say two plus two is four, please throw them out of the room. So I looked um, in a daze, and I looked at everybody, and everybody was very serious. And then he said, and if they say two plus two is 22, also throw them out of the room. 
And now I was completely flabbergasted and um, I wanted to scream, but you know, wanted to tell, the, tell them all of them, you know, do you know where I've come from? And uh, anyway, with an MBA. And um, then um, when I asked him, then what, what is it? W what is the right answer? He says, it's very simple. The value of two plus two in business all depends on whether you're to pay money or receive money. So, so uh, that was my first re-education in the business world after my master's program. Having said all this, um, um, I believe the, there are about millions of lessons that I can um, uh, give uh, about my life, but you know, I have to, I've selected three, which uh, I hope um, will uh, be of some value to all of you. Um, not the first one is instinct. When I look back my, at my uh, business life, nine times out of ten, after all the logical analysis and um, arguments, it was finally the instinct that made me do things which were successful. And it was when I went against my instinct it was nine times out of ten when I went against that I was unsuccessful. And I'll give you a small anecdote. Just a year into the world crash in 2008, um, I was looking for uh, a new business to get into. And um, it was my instinct that took me against all logic to the continent of Africa and in the country of Tanzania and uh, secure uh, concessions for mining for minerals and metals, precious, industrial, and strategic, and oil and gas. And you'll be happy to know that within um, another few months, not more than the end of this year, um, uh, our, uh, my investment over the last five years is going to pay handsome dividends. So that's, uh, that's uh, ample evidence to me at my age in life that um, in my case, at least, it's instinct that matters and uh, everything else is secondary. The uh, other, other lesson, uh, when I look back, is that of um, the uh, importance of revolution. You heard me right. Um, we have revolutions going on, on around us all the time. We don't recognize it. We only look at revolutions in terms of what's happening in terms of war and terrorism all over the world. But believe me, that's only one part of the story. And in the business world, in the marketplace, you have revolutions going on all the time. There are millions of examples all of you know in the last 30 years due to technology, due to changing conditions, due to politics. And um, uh, in my case, let me give you a quick example. When I uh, took over the family business at a very young age, for various reasons, uh, I was about 29 years old in uh, 1979. Uh, I had, uh, we had a whole clutch of businesses in shipping. We had shipping companies, hotels, travel agencies, manufacturing plants for uh, housing, mobile housing, uh, um, manufacturing plants for uh, steel pylons for uh, distributing electricity and um, so on and so forth. And um, um, within a decade, I got rid of all of them and uh, focused on my tiny little uh, construction business uh, on the energy sector and took it uh, all the way into uh, the uh, metallurgical sector, the transportation sector, uh, and all of this in over about at any given point in time uh, in five countries at the same time. Um, and um, about 10, 15 years later, uh, in this time period, I also uh, made joint ventures with the USSR government that was before Russia, the original uh, USSR and the original West Germany when there was no unification and the euro didn't exist, it was the Deutsche Mark. And, um, um, and on top of that, I went into uh, building um, massive canals, again in the country of India, 
because the World Bank had uh, financed a large program and they wanted uh, companies that could come in with modern equipment and uh, build them fast. So I jumped into all of this and um, to my surprise, the USSR decided to break up and uh, you, you have what you see now and uh, which was a pretty much of a blow because we were doing joint ventures for building steel plants and nuclear power stations in India. And uh, <clears throat> Germany decided to unify. So um, that changed the entire equation. And um, the focus then was from West Germany to rebuild East Germany as fast as possible with Germans and not with foreigners like me. And then uh, <clears throat> Of course, there was a rise of the uh, environmentalists, which uh, found its way to India, and the World Bank promptly canceled the canal building project, which was about a billion dollar project. And um, so we had to, we were hit by internal and external revolutions. So I had no choice but to make an internal revolution. And uh, we then went into uh, fast food businesses with Pizza Hut and KFC. Uh, and. Um, Along with that, we decided to get out of construction and went into engineering and project management, which is where we are now, and it's going great guns. And then, of course, what I said earlier, the um, uh, exploration for oil and gas, hydrocarbons, and the mining businesses. So, um, to me, I look at everything as a revolution. The marketplace is a revolution. It's in constant revolution, much more than mankind in its history. So that is a lesson that I've learned. And lastly, uh, which I would um, tell all of you very strongly, is the art of philanthropy. Uh, giving is one of, is the most pleasurable act in, in, in a human being. And um, I was, um, uh, let me say, uh, not uh, taught, but I was um, encouraged by no less a person than uh, a man I think all of you know, uh, I believe he's called Dalai Lama. We call him Dalai Lama. About um, 15, 18 years ago, in a school um, uh, in the Himalayan mountains where I had um, uh, given a library and a music school in memory of my uh, parents and I had the privilege of spending almost three quarters of the day with him. And um, um, he, he looked at me and he said, you seem to be very troubled. I said, yes, uh, I want to um, do a little bit more, but um, you know, more is not much. It's a few thousand dollars that I can afford at this stage. Um, and um, he looked at me and he said, um, no, nothing is too small. And, this, and I thought it was fantastic what he said thereafter. He said, you know, if anybody tells you that even uh, a few thousand dollars is too small, he said, just ask them, uh, is it to try and have a good night's rest with a mosquito hovering above your head? And you'll find out how, how small becomes very important. So <laughs> that was uh, a lesson which I never forgot. And um, I believe um, I've... Um, I try and live it every day of my life. I have imparted a lot of it, uh, hopefully, to my children. And um, uh, I'm quite sure that uh, they'll continue the legacy. So uh, uh, to uh, end, um, may I say that there are three things. One is instinct, in my case, the, <laughs> the art of revolution, and the art of philanthropy. So having said that, thank you once again. God bless, God be with you, and you will have the most spectacular 70, 80 years ahead of you. Thank you.